the event today, we're going to we have a few things set in place. So we're going to um, have the opening prayer, of course, because everything has to start with God and it has to end with God. And then we'll go through our safety brief, take some opening remarks from, from okay. Take the opening remarks from some of the student chapter presidents that are present here. Um, introduce our wonderful speakers. Go through some membership drive as well as personal testimonials of how amazing SB has been in the lives of you know some of the wonderful YPs that are present right here. So um, hopefully we'll try to stick to time and I'm sure that every single person here is going to get something amazing from this event. So thank you so much. So for the opening prayers, I would like to invite an SBE chapter president um, by the name of Bassi Godwin Bassi. Um, can you hear me Bassi? Bassi, can you hear me? Okay, I think he's having some internet issues. Then, then let me go ahead and... and yes, can you. you can hear me, Bassi. Can you hear me? Bassi, can you hear me? Okay, so network issues, that's uh, one of the drawbacks of, you know, virtual um, events and all that. So let me stop being for Basi um, today. Okay, let's close our eyes and bow our heads down for prayer. Um, in Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for a good day that we've had today. Thank you for the ability to be able to come here and join and listen to such um, topics. Father, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. As we're about to start, I ask that you help us understand. Let our time not be wasted. And all the speakers that are going to speak today, give them the grace to impart the knowledge that they have set to dispense to us properly and in such a way that we'll be able to understand. Thank you, Father, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so for the safety brief, um, in our industry, we understand what safety is and how it's very important. It's so important that even in virtual events like this, we have to do something similar to it, just for everyone to be cognizant of their environment and be aware of how to remain safe at all times. So for the sanctity of the meeting and to ensure that it's done in an orderly manner, I would implore all our um, invitees to please mute your mic when you're not speaking. And anytime you have something to say during maybe any of the presentations, please just raise up your hand. That's not, not physically, but you know, using the, the icons, just indicates that your hand is raised. And then myself or some others in the, in the team will be able to um, get your questions across. And when you're commenting, you, when you're using the chat button, before you type a comment, just press C, like type C first and then your comments. And then if it's a question, just type Q and then you now write, it, write, down, write down your questions. And so um, in as much as I presume that all of us were using, most of us at least, were using our earpiece or headphones or anything, make sure that it's not too loud so that in case there's something going on around you, like a fire alarm or a security alarm, you'll be able to hear it and try to be at a lot and aware of your environment at all times. And most importantly, please stay safe. So as the speakers are going to speak, um, they're going to speak for about 20 minutes. And then after that, we'll have a Q&A session. So like I said earlier, if you have a question, type Q and then type down your questions. And then if you have a comment, just see. And then I'll be going through the chat and then reading the questions or reading the comments as time permits. Thank you very much and welcome again, everyone. Okay, so for our opening remarks, I would like to invite the SBE student chapter president for UNICAL, um, Emmanuel Ogodo. Emmanuel, can you hear me? Emmanuel, can you hear me? Hello? Iwari, can you hear me? 
Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so is Emmanuel not on the... He's in... Okay, yes. Emmanuel, I can see you. Can you hear me? Does he have the access to speak? Was he made a co-host? Yes, he does. He He's a co-host. Can you maybe send a message, Emmanuel, if maybe you can't speak or something? Okay. Can another chapter president do the opening remarks for us? Sorry, if you're not um, how, speaking, how about, the mute. how about the NAU chapter president, Chukuka? Do you mind stepping in, please? Um, good evening, all. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Yes, I can hear you, Chukuka. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, okay, um, I would just like to appreciate each and every one of us that um, called it a business to be here, um, given our very, very busy schedules and all. Um, I really want to appreciate everyone. I want to appreciate the the SAC team um, of, of the Putakot section. Um, it's, this is a very, very good, uh, I don't know, I would say very good startup um, initiative and um, for the ALP. And I really think that it's really going to do a lot. Uh, most definitely, I just had to be here because it's something that is very integral looking at the topic for not just an engineer, not just someone in the energy industry, but for um, someone that a professional generally. So it really cuts across. And I just hope that we are going to make the most of this time. Um, our facilitators are very, very well capable. So have a nice time here. So um, thank you for having me. And um, I hope the program really goes well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Chukuka. Thank you very much for that fine speech. Even if you, we called you impromptu and then you still delivered, you delivered. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, without further ado, let's step right into what here, we are here for. That is the main event, talking about communication. We all know how important communication is the best way to communicate, how you should communicate, what you should say, the methods you should um, employ when you're communicating. These are some of the things that are going to be taught during our ALP program today. We all know how vital it is, not just in your personal life, but especially in your professional life. So I'm sure that, I'm very sure categorically that by the end of this session, we're all going to learn how to communicate better and more effectively. Um. So our next, our first speaker is someone that is not a stranger to any YP, any YP, both in Port Harcourt and in Nigeria. Um, Ofure is a certified petroleum engineer. She has experience in managing oil and gas assets. She, she studied petroleum engineering at University of Benin and graduated with first class honors. And she then later joined Shell Petroleum in 2019 and has held roles across the development team, supporting both land and energy assets. She's someone that is fought by her passion for, you know, the oil and gas sector. She has such tenacity, such hunger for knowledge. And that determination has, you know, contributed a lot to her recent success at work. She's also an advocate for diversity and inclusion, who tries to make sure that every single person feels inclusive in their workplace because of how important it is for workplace productivity. She's someone that believes in caring for people and she tries to inspire people to deliver their best while achieving personal, career, as well as spiritual growth. 
and her passion for that for for that care for you know young women especially has led her to co-found a network called Global Rich Girls, which you can find on Instagram. I implore you to follow this um, this network. It's doing phenomenal things, and they try they provide a safe space for girls and women to be open about their experiences and challenges. She's currently the Young Professional Chair for the SP Section 103 Port Accords. And apart from work, she, so she's the kind of person that enjoys taking a walk. She loves traveling, reading, spending time with her family as she tries to achieve that right work-life balance. I have said it, and this does not even come close to the amazing person that she is, truly. So it's an honor to welcome Ophira Ogege for her presentation on how to give effective communication. Ofre, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joan. <laughs> Thanks so much for the introduction. I'm super excited to be here. And You're it feels so welcome. good to be back to... Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it feels so good to be back to delivering ambassador lecturer programs, and I'm excited. And I know um, the session is going to be a great one. So um, I'm currently sharing my slide. Can you confirm that you can see it? Yes, we can see it and we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, Corey. great, good stuff. So just to ask student chapter presidents, kindly inform your people that we have started. Um, this session is not a session that you should miss. So just ensure that you um, tell your chapter members to join as soon as possible. So basically I'll be talking on the first bit of our session today, um, which is gonna be on effective communication and has, has to do with um, giving presentations. So um, basically my outline for the session, I'll do a brief introduction. June has already done an introduction of myself. So maybe just add a bit, a bit more about that after which uh, we'll talk about um, the meaning of effective communication. We'll also look at how important it is um, to give effect and communication effectively and how we can improve on our communication skills. We'll also dive a bit about um, presentation, how you can deliver um, presentations effectively, and then I'll draw up a conclusion on the subject matter. Okay. Yeah. So an add-on to what Jonas already said, I'm from Middle State, Nigeria, and um, just a bit about um, background um, background story that maybe not in the profile that I shared with June. So um, as an undergraduate, I did my Shell as my internship with Shell. That was in 2015, and um, after which I went back to school to complete my study. I actually finished from University of Benin. Then during my service year, I had the opportunity of interning with Cypher Crescent. I know some of us on the call might know Cypher Crescent. They're based in PH and they're into software development for um, the petroleum engineering industry. After which, in 2019, I joined Shell. And since then, it's been a wonderful journey. And um, it's just been great since, since I joined um, um, as a petroleum engineer. So to the right are just pictures of me, um, pictures of me when I was young, pictures of me, maybe um, of me now, and then other pictures of like trips outside of here for courses and all of that. So going into the reason why we are here today, what is effective communication? Yeah, effective communication is actually a process of you trying to exchange ideas. You want to exchange your information and knowledge um, in such a way that the purpose of which you're passing that message is actually done in a good manner. You want to ensure that you're communicating effectively. You want to ensure that the message you're passing is being understood by your listeners. I'm doing one at the moment. I'm communicating with um, the students and YPs on the call. And in this particular setting that we are in. I'm actually the sender of this information I'm passing across. And you guys on the other end, you are on the receiving end, you are you are the receiver of this information. My goal here today is to ensure that whatever message I'm passing across, the, the students on the call, the YPs on the call get this message and um, they are able to get the learning too from it. So being an effective communicator is really very important. And uh, as an effective communicator, you should have a, um, a listening skill, an ability to listen when people are talking, 
when you're talking, um, you know you're talking, and then when people are discussing or talking to you, you should be able to at least listen and understand what or the message that they are trying to pass across so that you too can also respond in, in a proper manner. So an effective communicator should be able to listen and also you should be able to express yourself to those around you. And uh, there are really some characteristics of effective communication. I have some on my slide. One, one major characteristics of effective communication is that you want to be able to, you want to ensure that your message is clear and um, your message is very precise. Um, you want to ensure that your message is understood by the people that you're talking with or be it there are different form of communications like we know if it's a mail or if it's even your normal even whatsapp communication or whatever means of com communication be it a phone call or whichever you want to ensure that your message is clear and it's precise it's straight to the point and also you want to ensure you're passing the correct message you don't want um, to make people um, you don't want to pass an erroneous message to people you want to ensure that whatever you're putting out there it's the right one because people would actually make decision from whatever message that you're sending across so if you go put the first message out there they will run with it and it will actually mess up um, whatever thing you're involved in for instance be it in a project that's worth billions of um, billions of dollars or millions of dollars and then you you're working in a team and um, you, you, you have an idea of what this project will cost and everything. And then maybe you're involved in a particular bit of the project that another person has to work with to make a decision. And you go ahead to give the person an information that has no right or even the data that's not right. And at the end of the day, the person runs with it. You might, the company might lose the money. You might lose money at the end of the day. So you want to ensure that whatever way you're doing your communication, be it verbally or um, other methods that we have, you want to ensure that it's passed correctly. You also want to ensure that the message is clear. Think for instance, I say, okay, I, I want you guys to maybe tell me about my years of experience. Maybe if I had not, you had not seen my profile or read about, um, seen my, my CV or anything anywhere before. And I'm like, okay, maybe someone just asks, what's our years of experience? And maybe the only idea you have is just, um, she graduated in 2016. Okay, what that that message is not it's not a full message. It's not complete because um, maybe in your head you might say, okay, there's one year for youth service, um, but it also depends. After youth service, do you know whether she got the job immediately? Do you know whether whether she had to be involved in some other things before landing um, the job she wanted and all of that? So as much as possible, you want to ensure that your message is complete because decisions will also be made from such messages. And another thing that's key is. Um, thinking about the, the the courtesy at which you're sending your message. You don't want to sound rude. People are listening. People are watching. You don't want courtesy. It's really very important. You need to send your message respectfully um, in, a, in a humble manner. You don't want to sound rude. You're talking to people. You can even be talking to bosses. You can even be talking to your fellow students. You need to pass your message in a respectful way. And, of course, you want people to maybe um, um, respond to that message and if you're doing it rudely I myself won't even want to reply you so these are really some of the characteristics that are really needed for you to be a, an effective communicator so why is it important why is effective communication important sorry I have to go this way at times because I'm looking at an external screen um, so one of the things that's very key it allows you to actually translate your intentions whatever message you want to pass across. Communication is you're talking to someone or doing it, maybe um, typing, maybe using a mail, or even now social media has helped us. We have chats and all of that. You want to ensure that whatever way you're communicating, your intention is being passed. Oh, you want to discuss something with someone. Now we even have the likes of voice notes on social media that will just drop a quick voice note for someone. You want to ensure that your intentions and your feelings, it's been passed and it's understandable. You don't want people to misinterpret the message that you're passing across. That's why it's very key for you to be an effective communicator. Another thing is also effective communication is key. Like I mentioned, for instance, a project or even you're working on a project in school final year you're working as a group and they divided the project into segments and you want to you need to work on a particular bit of that project and then you go do your research and you come up with first information 
the team will take up whatever you've given them and they'll run with it. At the end of the day, it messes your work. You go present to your lecturers and they're like, what is this? What the hell is this? But you don't want to be in that route. You want to ensure that whatever message, after doing the work and when it's done properly, you can actually communicate it to the team members that you're working with to ensure that um, you meet the goal. And of course, an effective collaborator, um, you communicating effectively makes you a better collaborator because people will want to associate with you because when did they have discussions with you or when they reach out to you for something, do, do you understand? And you're able to communicate effectively. If you're assigned a particular task at work or in school and able to um, communicate effectively, it draws people to you. People want to associate with you. And then you know what it is the other way around. If maybe I come to you and every time I come to you, we talk and at the end of the day, I get nothing from it. I won't even want to come to you. So indeed, some of the skills that are important for effective communication, one of them is listening skill. It's really very important that as a communicator, you also have an ability to listen um, to when, for instance, I'm giving this session at the end of the day, um, I would want to take questions at the end and I want to listen as much as possible so that we'll be able to attempt or sorry, provide responses to the questions that will be asked. Another thing that's key is empathy. You want to ha be able to understand the emotions of people that you're talking with. Someone might be going through a rough um, time at the moment and you just go and start talking football. It doesn't, doesn't really make sense. You need to know the mood at the time before you start talking. There's time for everything, like, <laughs> like, like, like we always say. So you want to understand um, the feelings of people around you before you even start talking. Or you enter a room, you want to give presentation, and you see that ah, people are just, their faces are somehow. You want to see how you can maybe lighten the mood before you kick off, instead of you just coming in and saying, today we'll be presenting this. You want to ensure that, oh, you're carrying everybody along. Maybe, oh, something just happened. You want to ensure that you understand the mood in the room before you come in and um, do whatever you want to do. Of course, during communication, non-member um, communication skills are still very key. Um, your gestures, your eye contact, making eye contact when it's maybe a physical setting. And for instance, now we're using virtual means. I had to at least turn on my camera because if I'm just talking behind my mic, it's quite different from at least you're seeing me talking. So I know it's a virtual world for now, but at least when you're giving virtual um, sessions, it's advisable that at least turn on your camera, let people see you since it's not a face-to-face -face setting. At least it just um, it makes them want to even listen to you more instead of seeing just a blank um, screen and just the voice coming from behind. Another skill that's important is self-confidence. This can be overemphasized. Um, and what helps with this is when you practice. So we'll be looking into presentation briefly. When you practice, it gives you confidence. It, and at the end of the day, it ties into the message you're passing across. You pass it with so much confidence. You 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 know that um, I am ready for this, and you're doing it with so much enthusiasm. So it's really very important that as effective communicators, we have um, the skills that we have outlined today. So how can you improve your communication skills? We've said it's practice active listening, focus on the non verbal manage your emotions, be it your own emotions and also the emotions of those in the room. Ask for feedback. It's very important. If you're working in a team in school or in the church or wherever you find yourself, listening about communication, for me, I can even say how I became this, at least how I built on my communication skills started from me taking up roles in church even before I became before I became very active in SPE I was and I am still um, a, an ESCO member in my youth fellowship and from there like a vice president of the youth you know you need to communicate with them you need to reach out to them so and of course you need to stand in front at times to give maybe announcements or whatever in church all of those things actually help so you that's maybe shying away from the give you responsibility you say no I can't do it you're always rejecting let me tell you those that are actually taking it up and doing these things they are they are building the skills these skills, they don't just come. You need to get in there and do stuff for you to be able to activate it. So don't shy away from stuff. For instance, they're saying we need volunteers to take up opening remarks. We need volunteers to give the opening prayer. Even if maybe um, you were not assigned, you can actually just raise, use the raise hand button and say, I want to. With that, you start building your confidence. So it's really very key for us.
And also effective communicators are actually good at public speaking. So that, that's the example I just cited with me taking up a role. I was assigned um, an ESCO in the vice president in the, in the committee for youth in my church. And with that, I started speaking to public people in the public. And now it's becoming part of me. And even if maybe it's an impromptu thing, I'm not, I'm not going to be fidgeting because at least I know it's a new audience, but to an extent, because you've been doing this thing for a while, it's just going to come with you. So it's very important that with public speaking, it will help you to improve your communication skill. It can be in school and there are and there are people that um, in, in your in your class, there are people that you you can ask also work with either in, as a team or even in the class. I know some people that will be in class they don't even talk. No, it's very important. You want to become an effective communicator. There's something that you don't understand. A lecturer is teaching. You'll be at the back. You won't ask your question. You'll be scared. No. You raise hand, you're all students, you're all equal, you're just, you're all on the same level. So nobody's going to laugh at you. You need to be able to express yourself. And it, it starts from those, those things, those little things that we do. It sure adds up to become the effective communicator that we all want to be. So I'll move next now to the rules of um, communication and presentation. One, it's very important that when you're giving presentations, you don't want to be in a noisy place. Work normally closes by four. I'm an early bed. I, I go to work early and work closes by four. But because, okay, um, maybe I finished my tax today sometime around past four. And I'm like, okay, before I start um, heading home and then I might be hit by traffic. I might be on transit and how would I be presenting on the road? It doesn't make sense. So you want to ensure that you're not in a noisy area. You want to ensure that you're comfortable wherever you are when you want to give presentation. You want to ensure that you have practiced. Practice makes perfect. It's very key. You can't say you want to go give a presentation today and you've not researched about the topic. You've not done your assignment homework to say, okay, let me even understand what this is about. Let me pull my slides together. Let me do this. No, it's very important that you are prepared. It gives you that extra, that confidence that you need. When you're prepared, you've gone through your presentation. For me, I do dry runs or reviews on myself. If, for instance, I want to present to my bosses, there's a project I'm working on. I do voice recording on my phone. I want to record. I want to hear how it's going to sound or um, maybe anything that I need to adjust. Is there anything that I've missed out? It's just like I'm presenting to myself. At times, I may have folks in my home, in my house, and I'm like, oh, let me present to you. I'm preparing for this thing. I'm practicing because I want the presentation to be flawless. I want it to really go well. Another one is that you want to speak clearly and convincingly, please. And um, it's not a time to phone Some people might not understand what you're saying when you're getting accents in there. Just ensure that you're speaking fluently and you're speaking clearly and your message is being passed across um, as much as possible. Another thing that you want to do is that you want to use pictures um, and you want to have visual representations in your slide. You don't want your slide to be too wordy. And of course, when you're talking with pictures, you want to use a pointer so that um, the audience can easily see that, okay, you're talking about a particular segment before you move to the next. You use your pointer, it aids in them trying to even concentrate on the particular segment that you're talking about. Please, another one is that you need to be on time. You've been allotted the time to present. You don't want a situation where they'll start telling you five minutes remaining, this minutes remaining. You would even work, if they are giving you 20 minutes, you'll say, okay, I want to work with the, the 15 to 18 minutes window instead of them prompting you. And also have time to, for question and answer. It's very key. So now what then are the tips for creating an effective presentation? There are really um, important tips that we must know. One is one of them that's really very key for your presentation slides because what we normally use when we want to give presentation is PowerPoint. So for those of you that don't know how to use PowerPoint, when you're giving your project defense, you will use PowerPoint. And even maybe you're presenting a technical paper in SPE, you will use PowerPoint. So it's very good that you already know how to use these tools beforehand. So one of the things you want to do is to ensure that your font size, your font style is clear. It's, it's, it can be readable from a distance. You know, at times it might be a physical setting and some the hall can be so big and some people are sitting behind. You want to ensure that the font size, the font si style, it's the one that people can read, not the one that will be um, in, in a style that people can't even read, read. You want to avoid all of those things. 
of course, you want to keep it simple. You don't want your slides to be too wordy. You want to ensure that you are minimizing the amount of text you have in your slide. Because most times you want to use bullet points like I've done on this slide now. Because what a bullet point does for you, because you have practiced and you have prepared, it just gives you a reminder about what you want to talk about. It's not that you're supposed to put all the story about this particular line. For instance, I want to talk about keep it simple. I will make it up to four lines. Your, your audience will be distracted. Instead of them listening to you, they'll be looking at, oh, let's read this slide first. They want to understand what you have first on the slide before even taking time to listen to you. But because you've prepared, you know what you want to say about keep the text simple, it already just flows. So it's very important that you minimize the amount of text um, you have on your slides. Another thing you want to do is that you want to um, use ads to convey messages, visuals. At times, pictorial views are really very important. It drives home the message at time, most times. So at times you have visuals, but it shouldn't be too much, please, when you're using visuals. And then um, spelling, checking for spelling and grammar. Oh, please, you don't want to be in a situation where you have your slide up there and there are errors in spelling. I'm someone that... <laughs> Most times I easily, if I see a particular document or stuff, I easily just detect errors from spellings and all of that. So when you're presenting, you want to ensure that you've checked through your sli slides to ensure your spellings and your grammar, it's really correct and up to date. So the next, and I think this is going to be our final bit, how can you deliver effective presentations? After you have prepared, after you've created your presentation slide, how can you prepare? Um, deliver effective presentation. One, showing up early. You can't go for a presentation, even a job interview, and you go five, even five minutes after the time is very wrong. Even five minutes even before is very wrong. Because for instance, if you're presenting with a laptop and all of that, you want to ensure you're already in the room, you have tested your laptop, if it's compatible with the devices there, um, the, you want to ensure that it's compatible compatible with the projector. You want to ensure that your computer will work fine in that particular um, setting that you have in the room. You want to ensure that the equipment is working properly. You don't want the situation when it's five minutes and um, when people are already seated. That's the time you're already trying to arrange. It shows that you are not ready and you're not prepared. So please, as, as far as you've prepared for a session, show up early. Show up early ensure that everything is set up and in place so that as soon as it's time, we kick off immediately. Another one is that you want to keep your presentation simple. Let people get the main message, the message you're trying to pass across. Let them get the message. You don't want to bore people with a lot of information, grammar, too much of facts and figures. As much as possible, keep the presentation simple. Keep it simple. And then, of course, um, most times you want to ensure that, okay, if you're the type that don't want distraction, you want to manage your time well, you can tell your audience, please, questions will be taken at the end of the presentation. So that already helps them to say, okay, she doesn't want to be distracted. You can even use the chat box to put your question. When she's done, she attends to you. And then um, don't read your presentation. It's really very key. Don't read everything, every line. The, the essence why you have... Um, a, a slide there is just to guide you. It's just to guide you, just to make you remember the points you want to discuss. So it doesn't make sense that you are reading to the audience. They can read. They can actually read. <laughs> so they don't really need you to do that. So you, you want to be able to, you want to explain what you have on your slide. You don't want to read it to them because they themselves can read. You also want to stay on time. Timing is very key. Work within the time that you've been allotted. Don't go out outside that time that you've been allotted. And of course, you want, to be, you want to monitor the behavior of your audience. It's very key. If your audience, the, 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 the energy in the room is maybe really not, it, it's not maybe 100 or it's somehow, you want to ensure that at least you're able to bring people together. If people are distracted, you want to ensure that you can bring them back. There are ways you can actually do that. <laughs> so so when, when we are communicating. So it's really very important that you monitor the, the energy in the room. You are trying to carry your audience as much as possible because you're passing a message across and you want everybody to get the message you're passing you're trying to practice. And of course, practice makes perfect. It can be overemphasized. All the great speakers, the, the public speaking people that are doing so well these days, they were really ones like, they were really ones in a situation where they couldn't even present, but now they are experts. Why? Because they've been able to practice, they've been able to develop themselves. So if maybe you're in this 
maybe category of people that maybe you've never even done presentation before, don't feel bad, don't fidget. You can develop um, the skills, you can work on yourself and you become a better communicator. And of course, no stress. When you're prepared, when you're ready, you won't even be fidgeting. It just flows. You'll be, able, you'll be relaxed and as you're presenting, you'll also be enjoying yourself. So in conclusion, um, it's really very important that um, you adopt a, a positive approach to whatever you're doing. Given presentation, you want to ensure that you, you're going in with the mindset that my presentation is going to be great and uh, uh, my audience will get the best from the session. And also you want to ensure that you believe in yourself because it's, it's, a, it's a ripple effect. If you believe in yourself that you will sure do something well, it's going to play out in the way um, the session will go at the end of the day. You need to believe in yourself that you're going to deliver an effective um, session or an effective presentation but you need to prepare if not you go there and flop and then um, also you need to know that people actually suffer, suffer from public speaking so you're not if maybe for instance you have this fear of speaking in public just know that you can actually work on it so if you have that fear about 75 percent based on statistics have that fear of public speaking so it's normal to be anxious when maybe you're presenting but let me tell you if you're prepared when you start presenting it just flows it just flows you don't even need to stress yourself anymore because why you have preferred maybe initially you entered and you see bosses ceo of this this man big this that but because you're prepared initially maybe ah when you start talking your voice but before you know as far as you're prepared it just flows and at the end of the day you'll finish and there'll be clapping for you because you did a fantastic job so please i'll just also say that there's no communication that's simple that cannot be misunderstood. So ensure that you are passing your message correctly. Don't say uh, it's simple. People can misinterpret things. So ensure that whatever message you're passing across, it is clear, it is concise, it is um, correct, it is complete. And also please ensure you stay calm you're composed and you're comfortable. You need to be comfortable because it will show up. Your posture is very key. If maybe you're um, giving a presentation that's in a face-to-face -face setting, your posture is very key. And I'll just end um, with this final quote by Tio Gold. It says, communication is your ticket to success if you pay attention and learn to... So, if, if, so communication is your ticket to success if you actually pay attention to it and you do it effectively. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you so much, Ofre. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. From your uh, from your mannerism, from the way, the way you talk to your slides, everything was just perfect. At least from my own end, I might be biased, but it was really good. Thank you so much, Ofer. <laughs> so we, uh, I mean, you talked about effective communication. How is simply just a presentation of your views, you know, in a way that is best understood by the audience. How your message should be clear, it should be correct, it should be complete. And I loved how you emphasize on courtesy because that's something that a lot of people don't really, you know, take into consideration. You have to be respectful and you have to be humble when you're dealing with people because that's like 50% of your success. Once you're courteous to people, they will actually want to listen to you and they'll actually make that effort to understand. And of course, practice. You have to practice how to present properly. And SP is a beautiful, it's a wonderful avenue to do so. You volunteer, you volunteer, you volunteer, and you know you can you get better at it. And I'm I'm definitely a I'm definitely a testimony because I can attest to how SP has helped in volunteering. So um, I love the tips you gave on presentation, short, concise, straight to the point. So thank you so much, Ofre. I'm really grateful. Thank you. We are all we are all grateful. Okay, so um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, we have a few minutes. So please just indicate on the chat, or you can just raise your hand. Okay, questions are coming in. All right. Okay, so we have a question. Oh, Ray, you can hear me, right? You can yeah, see loud me? and clear. Okay, that's good. yes. Okay, so. Uh, of, we have a question from Chukuka Egbe, that's from NAU. He says, is it okay to add humor to your mode of delivery when presenting to an official audience? 
Okay. <laughs> you okay for that particular one? I think you need to be careful because it's an official setting, and um, you need to read the room too to an extent. And um, it depends. So when you are flowing and you see that people are following what you're doing, you can maybe just start and you just start with human in an official setting. They'll look at you like this one is not ready. But maybe as you're going through your presentation, you're filling the room, people are following and all of that. Maybe you can just chip in one or two, but that shouldn't be the main thing or the main reason why you're doing that. So human, maybe it can go, but you shouldn't, it shouldn't be for the start of your session because it's an official setting. People are there for business. They are there. They mean business. They're not there to come joke. If they want to joke, they should go listen to it. They should go to AY Life and go have fun and laugh over it. But you need to read the room once you start giving your presentation and you see they're following and you feel, if I crack a joke here or just say something, at least they would laugh based on um, maybe how the session has been going. So it's not just, um, you need to at least read the room. It's really very important and it shouldn't be too much. Yeah, in an official setting. Thank you. Thank you, Ofra. Uh, I hope you were able to get that. I hope you, she answered your questions. Okay, so, um, as we're going to another question from Otsuanwan Ekpeyong. I apologize if I'm not pronouncing it well, please forgive me. Um, her question is, what would you do if you noticed that your audience looked bored during a meeting? <laughs> okay, so that one is still very important too. Can you hear me? Yes, Hello? yes, we can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, okay. So um, if you are in a situation where um, you're in a room and you're giving a session and people are bored, <laughs> you need to look out for ways to carry them along because it will even affect you. <laughs> because they, I'm talking to people and they are not listening. I will feel some kind of way. So as much as possible, you want to look for ways to carry them along. And one of the things that will make audience bored when you're giving presentation is maybe um, your, your session is too long. <laughs> for instance, um, you, you put a session for an hour or you put a session that's maybe two hours, so long a time, and maybe they've been listening to you for over 30 minutes, you're not getting the main message from your session. Before you know, they get distracted, especially in this virtual world now. Um, I can just feel like I'm still here, but I'll be multitasking, I'll be doing something else. You can't see me, you don't even know what I'm doing. But as much as possible, one of the ways to avoid um, making your participant or your audience from getting bored, you want to ensure that you're passing the right message because you sent that invite. For instance, we sent out this invite and said, we're talking about communicating effectively. And we come here and now we start talking about something different. People will sure be bored because they had already set out their mind to say, or come in here to learn skills on how I can become an effective communicator. So you want to ensure that you, you're passing the right message to avoid um, them getting bored. And if you're passing the right message and you're hitting the high notes, you won't have bo boring audience. And this also has to do with you preparing. You've been giving a topic to discuss or you've been working on a project. You want to go defend it to your manager. You should know the key things they want to see. So you want to ensure that you have all of those things itemized. You don't want to beat around the bush. And um, also, you can look out for ways to bring people back. It can be maybe a bio break. It can be maybe a stretch. It can be like just do something that will want to call their attention back. It's really very important if you see that, oh, people are getting bored. It can be, okay, let's take questions for now or let's do something else that will help the, the mood in the room. Yeah, I hope that helps. Okay, I, I think it does. Ophir, thank you very much. So we have like just like three minutes on our question and answer session and more coming in. So let's try to, you know, go as fast as possible. Uh, I think there was I'm one by Patrick. Your... I don't know if you saw that yes. one. Yes, yes, I'm okay. going to read it out now. So Ophir, I'm testing your time management skills. <laughs> You're on hot seat now. <laughs> okay, so Patrick's, Patrick's question is, What's the best way to handle time issue, especially when you still have something salient to talk about? Okay. Nice. <laughs> so uh, for me, though, like I mentioned, 
I try to, one of the reasons why I do voice recording on my phone is that I want to ensure that I've been given a time to say present for 20 minutes or 15 minutes. And you want to work within that time. So you want to ensure that your key messages are being passed because that is what you want to pass. That's what you want to share with your audience. So it's not a time where you start talking about stories and all of that. So, of course, when you practice, it helps you with time management. When you practice, it helps you to know, okay, at this particular point, this is what I want to say. At this particular point, this is what I want to say. And it will help you overall with managing point. And at the end of the day, you'll be able to say all the points that you have in that short period of time. So Patrick, I would say you need to see how practicing helps with that. And you won't have the issue when you start saying, and they start rushing to say 10 minutes, five minutes more, or your time is up, that kind of thing. So as, as much as possible, try to practice because they've told you 20 minutes is 20 minutes. So don't go and put too many stories or you'll be doing storytelling instead of passing the right message. So I hope um, that response helps um, for that particular question. Um, thank you, Ofure. Okay, so rapid, rapid fire questions. Um, would you advise looking, would you advise making eye contact with your audience, especially when it's an interview or a contract or project pitch? Of course, eye contact. very important. <laughs> yeah, awesome. of course, very important. Eye contact in whatever setting you're, you're in, it, it, it shows that you are bold. It shows that you know what you're doing. So eye contact is very, very key. Yes. Okay, so that question was from a second question from Chukuka. And then we have another question from Beredugo Biyanyo Benjamin. While presenting, is it proper to use a rhetorical question? Okay. <laughs> I think you can. Rhetorical question. Maybe you want to get a view of the audience. So you can actually do such. I think, I think it works. Yeah, rhetorical question, but at the end of the day, you still want to understand your audience. Mm? Some people might not be in the mood to answer or to even think about stuff, but I feel it can also work. Yes, you just want to, even the rhetorical question can even help with getting, if maybe you feel they are bored, you just drop in something there to get their attention. I think that can also fly. Awesome. Okay, so our last question is from Samuel Ogidi. He commented, wonderful presentation and a beautiful slide as well. Um, his question is, what will you do when there are unforeseen circumstances like power failure, system issues, and the likes? Should you stop, continue, or what should you do? And another question to that is, what do you do when you realize you just made a single mistake? So please just help us answer this question in one minute. Okay, good to go. So Okay, so for the one on uh, power failure, please, it's really very important. I think I was reading somewhere recently that they said they were interviews for some job opportunities and they were like somewhere in Africa. I, I think it was a review that was done. So most of the applicants somewhere in Africa, um, some of them didn't pass the interview and all of that. The reason was that why they, some of them, why they were interviewing them, maybe issues with power, they couldn't hear internet issues and all of that please for major presentation <laughs> as much as possible ensure that your laptop must have been charged if maybe your area is somewhere that doesn't have constant power supply look for somewhere to go and charge your phone you don't want to give your your audience that kind of story that it just shows that you are not ready so we we we, we are nigerians we understand our setting the white guys maybe those people now did the interview with the whites but you you know your setting yet yeah, they might not understand the situation how it's of a power failure and all of that yeah so if it's to go to someone that has gen um charge your laptop to be full for that particular set um segment and once it's time you put it on that's very important then if you're having system issues try and handle it before time because people might not understand it will just show that you're not serious it will just show that you're not prepared so if your laptop has been giving you issues try and fix it before time or maybe even borrow from someone from a friend because maybe it might be an interview for a job or something you don't want to start giving some um, interview as that kind of story just ensure that you're prepared i know it's really not easy for us i must say but ensure that you have all of these few things they matter power issues and all of that you need to go somewhere um, um somewhere that's really comfortable for you because you want to ensure that you're in a comfortable space when you're presenting and to the question what do you do when you realize you just made it <laughs> okay so for that particular one i would advise 
I think it's a two-way thing. <laughs> so it depends. Um, at times, some people might not even pick up the error you have made. Some people might not pick up the error. And you know, when you when you make a mistake at times, it might even set your balance. So of course, maybe what you want to do, just flow along, flow along. And if um, when you're done presenting, you can just, if maybe if someone might have picked it up, you can respond to that as an, like, oh, sorry about that. This was a mistake. And maybe at the end, you also want to tell them that, oh, there was a slight mistake here and um, it will be updated or so, so there are ways you can handle it if you're someone that okay you're used to the audience maybe i might be in my team we're working as a team i know my team members and i notice oh there's a slight error you can just maybe tell them but if it's an audience that you really don't know you can just flow along because it might even throw your balance and then maybe towards the end if anybody draws your attention to it you just apologize to say i'm so sorry about that that was a mistake and um, it will be corrected so uh, i think that's that's the way you can go about um, slight mistakes during presentations Thank you so much, Ofuri. And thank you very much to everyone that sent in their questions. But we're out of time. Ofuri, I think you can see there's a question by Ebenezer Anion. Maybe you can okay. at least type your response for him, you know, because of time management. And yes. All right. So well no said. That's good, right? Okay. Thank Thanks you so, so much, much for Ofuri. having me. Thank you too. Wow. It was a it's good our privilege. One. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Um, you can stop sharing and I'll take one. Okay. Um, I have to agree that was a very impactful session from Ofre. Thank you so much. She, um, just to reiterate, she talked about how to communicate effectively, how to present properly to people and ensure that they understand what you're talking about and you know there's no time wasted. So our second speaker, she's also someone that we all know in our SPE um, Nigeria section, uh, in our SPE Nigeria uh, family. This is someone that we all know, I'm very sure. <laughs> um, so um, Madam Dokas, what's his crew? She's a Christian. She's someone that is enthusiastic and committed to adding value to the world at, at large through small units, taking one step at a time. She's someone that tries to aspire for peak heights and she's a graduate of petroleum engineering with a great zeal of knowledge for knowledge, research and problem solving. And all this resulted in her undergraduate projects, which is titled the design of a floating roof crude oil storage tank of 100,000 barrels per day capacity. And this project attracted a TED fund research grant, a project established in Taraba State University. She bagged a distinction in Masters of Technology in Petroleum Engineering and, an, and a mini MBA with the Tekedai Institute. She's currently pursued, pursuing her doctorate degree on alternate clean and sustainable, sustainable energy. She's a strategic white young professional member of the, of the SBE, um, of the SBE, and she's an active volunteer whom through her numerous apps, skills, and services has won several awards for herself and her local section. She has won, um, she has been part of awards like the 2021 Best ALP, 2022 Best YP Section Awards. And she's currently the second runner up for the SPE Port Harcourt YP Maiden Entrepreneurship and slash Business Idea Contest. And as a result, started um, DEJ, Wheel, that's D-E-J-W-E-W -E Nigeria Limited, which is a startup, com startup company that is involved in research, especially waste, wealth, and or energy. She's certified in both technical and non-technical skills, such as project management, basic Python, machine learning, artificial intelligence, in class coding and programming, humble leadership, eloquent professional communications. She's a drilling field specialist that has over seven years academic and less than a year field experience. And she has been involved in several, several energy related projects and researches, resulting to her having over 10 publications in both international, local and professional journals. Right now, her present vision is to attain the highest height in her career, 
in the energy industry and the academic world, where there are tough dynamic challenges with a team, as she's a good team player, impacting insightful career and moral values to the world around her, while being a role model and a source of inspiration to every human, most especially the girl child. So please allow me to introduce Madam Dokas Otsis Kuro. Ma, you are welcome. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much for having me, June. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much Good for the evening. opportunity. I sincerely yes. do appreciate. Um, so I'll just go straight to sharing my slide so we can kick start with this presentation. All right. Can we all see my screen yet? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. So once again, um, good evening everybody. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, it's always an honor for me and an opportunity to develop myself when I get to come make presentations. All right, so um, we're going to be talking about um, elevator pitches, okay? Um, we've heard about effective communications, how to communicate effectively. Now we know how to communicate effectively. Let's say you have few seconds to communicate to somebody. Let's learn how to do that, uh, what it takes and what it involves, okay? All right, so why are we here? Like I said, we're here to learn about what elevator pitches mean, um, why do you need it, or why is it important, and how to be able to do it properly, okay? All right, uh, first of all, what does it mean? It's a brief. You need to understand that an elevator pitch is a very brief Okay, it could be 30 seconds, you know, just like the time it takes you to ride on an elevator. So it could be 30 seconds, a way of introducing yourself or whatever it is you want to sell or whatever it is you want your audience to know about and being able to get across the point, a point or two, okay? And then also to be able to make a connection with somebody. So it's not just you making a brief, it's not just you introducing yourself. It's not just you selling something or being able to make a connection. So they might want to contact you again or want to um, pitch or, you know, take advantage of that key point that you shared with them. All right. So I have a picture there where someone is like, you saw somebody entering an elevator, somebody they really want to meet or they've been loving to meet. And they're like, oh, wait. And then the person give them a chance and they say, oh, I have an idea. Right. And then because they were able to sell their points, they were able to make a connection. So they there's a handshake saying we have a deal, right? Okay, so here, these are different examples or different situations you can make an elevator pitch. It could either be in the elevator, literally, or it could be at a business um, proposal. It could be at a dinner with somebody, a quick shot dinner or snack time with someone. It could be while someone is trying to catch a ride and you try to stop them and sell an idea to them. It could be either of this. And I also have a picture over here where the pre presentation was not properly done. And you can see the person saying, this is totally useless, okay? So you don't want this situation, to, this particular situation to happen to you. You want this one at the top where the person said, we have a deal or where you were able to, you don't want a situation where you just want to say, oh, I have an idea, but the person leaves you and still zooms off. No, you want to have this first situation up here where you can strike a deal, okay? So uh, why do you need an elevator pitch? Or why is it important? Why is it necessary? Why do you need to make it, okay? Why should you have one ready already, okay, before that opportunity comes? Why you need that is just one simple reason. Because it could be your only chance or your only opportunity to make that big push to get that achievement you've been looking for or to be able to achieve that development you've been looking for. So it is very, very important. It cannot be overemphasized. Every single one of us should be able to have an elevator pitch already prepared or already set in case the situation presents itself. I'm going to try to share you a story. In fact, I have several stories of um, 
elevator pitch opportunity, but I hope I have time. I'll try to share at least one of it with us. Okay. All right, so when is this elevator pitch important? Is it just every single minute you find someone, you have two seconds, you just want to tell them about yourself, you want to connect and no. Um, there are situations or there are cases where it is very, very important. First is when you're meeting somebody for the very first time. Like they always say, first impression matters a lot, okay? So the very first time you get to meet with someone, especially someone you've been dying and looking forward to meeting, okay? You should have an elevator pitch ready to be able to make a connection so they would want to meet with you again all right and then also what other time is when you want to capture your capture the attention of your audience and that opportunity to capture the attention is limited maybe you've met the person for the very first time you created an impression or um, you then at that point you didn't particularly need them for something then now you need them for something and you barely do not have the time you had the first time you met them okay so an elevator pitch is very important because it could help you capture that person's attention at that limited time or space you have okay and then also um, is when the person is in position to help you. So it's not just everybody you meet, you strike an elevator pitch with. No, it should be someone that can help you, someone that can give you that push you're looking for, that development, that achievement, that opportunity you've been looking for. So these are situations or cases where um, the three, for me, it's very important um, for you to have an elevator pitch, okay? So here's a summary of what a template, a typical, template of an elevator pitch should be about whether you're writing it down like a proposal or whether you're going to say it to somebody this is a typical template of what it should be first of all introduce yourself some of us are so good to start a, a, a discussion or strike a discussion with somebody even without introducing themselves. Me, for one, if you start a discussion with me, no matter how interesting that your discussion is, I won't tell you like, in my mind, I'm busy trying to wonder what could be this person's name? Where did I know this person from? Where did this person know me from? Do you get? So it is very, very important to introduce yourself. You don't have to tell them the whole story about you or everything about you, but at least a name and a place or an organization you can be identified with. So you introduce yourself. Secondly, you present the problem. You have limited time. So don't stay there and talk about, oh, out there, um, shoe is nice, how their makeup is awesome, except that's the catchy point for you, but go straight to the problem, okay? What is that problem you are trying to solve or that exists or that they would be able to help you with or that you notice in them that you want to solve for them, okay? And then also don't just present the problem, present the solution, I'm, I, I doubt if there's anybody that doesn't know that they have a problem when they have a problem. But what people are looking for is solution. So don't just introduce yourself, present a problem, present the solution that you have to that problem, okay? For them, if it's in a case of where they have the problem and you are providing a solution for them, okay? Present the solution, all right? And then share your value um, proposition. That means if there are things you've achieved in the past, you've done so well in that is relating to that problem or that has to do with that solution that that solution help you to achieve present it to them okay let them understand that you're strategic you'll be able to solve this thing you're capable you know maybe sharing some milestones or previous experiences or so okay and then last of all add a call to action so don't just um, create that connect. In some cases, they give you their card. We have a deal and it ends there. You don't call them back. You don't get back to them. You don't send an email. You don't send a text, nothing. No, continue that connection you have created, okay? So go back, add a call to it, have an email, send an email in that respect, in that regard, you know, something, but make sure you keep that connection, all right? All right, so now that we know the templates, um, this is just some tip or a brief of um, what I just explained um, deeply. I said, make it brief. Remember from the very first the, the, um, definition we gave, it has to be very brief, okay? And then also um, target the pitch, um, target your pitch to the events you're attending. Um, sometimes 
you see someone that is looking for internship opportunity, right? And then instead of you attending events like NICE, you're attending social events like a night of a thousand laugh. I mean, it's very possible the MD of Shell could show up at uh, a night of a thousand laugh. But come on, are you going to now start striking an elevator pitch of saying, um, instead of you people, you know, reciting over the different jokes and how the artists did so well, you now come to them and start telling them, an IT position. First of all, before they went to that social event, they just want to throw their feet, you know, lay their head back, relax their feet, and just have fun and have a social time. Okay. So try to make sure you are pitching at an event that can provide you um, that solution you're looking for or that opportunity you're looking for. All right. And then practice your elevator pitch, just like um, we learned in effective communication. Don't just have it in your mind or don't just plan it and, you know, you follow the template. Try to practice it, okay? Practice it with someone, practice it with yourself, you know? And then also, um, when you finally get that opportunity, have an ask. I've had cases or situations where students meet me or even um colleagues and professionals meet me are like, oh, wow, Dockers. Ah, the Dockers were always hearing about. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Can I have your contact? Um, I don't have issues with giving my contact, but I have issues with giving my contact for no reason. <laughs> so have that your ask. Ask something, all right? Make the person, if you don't have a particular need at that point, which I feel you must have had a need, that's why you're trying to meet that person. But if you don't have a particular or a specific you know, need at that point, right? Um, still let them know that I'll be looking forward to mentoring opportunities from you. I'll be looking forward to reaching out to you in this particular thing I want to do. But have an ask. Don't just ask somebody, oh, how are you today? I hope you've eaten the day is well and blah, blah, blah. Except that somebody you've already created a relationship with. If not, have your ask in your elevator pitch, okay? And then again, like I said, follow up it is very key to follow up all right so these are our tips um there are several elevator pitch you can have but i'm just gonna um talk about just these eight because maybe because i've used some of them before or some of them it's easy for me to relate with or to explain better okay so we have from a short and sweet elevator pitch to an end with a one-liner elevator pitch, okay? So what does a sweet and short elevator pitch mean? It means going straight to the point. You don't beat about the bush. You don't go round and round and round. You just go straight to the point. Secondly, it is captivating. That's why it's not just sweet. It's not just short, but it's sweet. So it is captivating, okay? And then also, um, it has to, it, it emphasizes on landmarks or achievements or great things that have been done in the past, okay? And I have a typical example there. I said, um, let's say, for example, I want to meet with, I, I get the opportunity to meet with the president of Nigeria today, and I need to strike a connection with him, right? And I know Nigeria is involved with lots and lots of projects. I had to use project management, maybe because it's something I'm a bit um, <laughs> used to or familiar with, okay? So I have an example there. It says, the problem is that work is chaotic. No matter what industry you're in or how good you are at a job, but a good project management software can help improve productivity and communication. I haven't missed a deadline in years. If you're interested in how it can help your team, give me a call and I can take you through some numbers, okay? So you make that person feel you are necessary, you're needed, you have the solution. In fact, the one and only solution to that, their problem, okay? So make it captivating, make it short and straight, and try to bring in achievements in the past you have done, okay? The second one is relatable and re um, reliable. Now, this one is you trying to be in their shoes, okay? Trying to make the person understand that, I know the frustration you're going through, or I know what you're going through, I have been there before, and this is what I did to be able to solve that problem, okay? So try to be in their shoes, all right? Um, try to say, um, things you did that arrive at um, the at solution. Don't just say, "Oh, I've been in your shoes." Ah, sorry. When my when your father when my father died, ah, I was so painful and sad. That's all. No, you should be able to say, "Oh, well, I read my Bible, or I read this book, and it was very comforting." Would you want me to share that book with you, 
Or would you want me to share those verses with you? Or would you want to pay a visit at my church? You know, as much as you relate with them, give them a solution, something they can easily relate with, okay? So it's not just um, relatable and then something reliable, okay? And then ask your ask, like I said. So I have an example here. I said, it's so good to finally meet you. How is business going? I heard you have been struggling with communication issues. Oh, my team and I struggle with that too. It wasn't until we added project management software into our routine. And that we really saw an improvement in teamwork and overall communication. I hope you find a solution that works for your team. So you put that person in that situation of, I relate with this person, right? But I also have a reliable one-time solution for you. So it makes the person wants to connect with you. It makes the person wants to reach out to you again. All right. So we also have the savvy and start one okay now this one has to do with statistics now this is a bit shaky i hardly use this because uh i i don't know maybe i'm not very good with statistics or i don't want to share statistics with somebody and then the person finds out it is inaccurate i tell you the truth it would take a lot for that person to want to communicate back with you so before you use this type of elevator pitch you should make sure the statistics or whatever you're giving is accurate and is correct okay so um make them understand also that it is very useful okay and then also present your solution we cannot overemphasize it present your solution in that challenge so i have an example there it says did you know that despite having more ways to connect remotely 60 percent of workers time is spent on work coordination with just 26 percent spent on skilled work and 14 percent on strategy no wonder team needs help with project management Implementing project management tools can decrease time spent on work coordination and help increase skill work. So you gave them statistics of this happened, this is how many percent, that's how many percent, that's how many percent. But with this, we've been able to reduce those percentages or we've been able to achieve this much, okay? But like I said, make sure the statistics you're giving are accurate because you might be sharing with someone that is an expert in that field. And if for some reason they find out that it is not accurate or it's not true, you've already lost that connection, okay? All right, and then another one also is, I love this one, I love to use this one. <laughs> the questioning everything, all right? Um, in this kind of uh, elevator pitch, you leave the person with a question. You leave them with a curiosity. You leave them looking for answers to the questions you asked, okay? <laughs> so, um, I have one here, it says, um, do you ever feel like you spend too much time on work, about work. You've asked them a question that they are going to go home and be thinking about, okay? So I've talked to so many people who share the same frustration. I use work, I used to work long hours every day, just trying to catch up, okay? But do you know what? Now I've left them with the curiosity, okay? First, I left them with a the question they have to go and worry about. Now I've left them with the curiosity. Uh -uh, what is this thing that she wants to share, okay? Or what is this solution she has for me or she has concerning people spending too much time on work? I said, ever since we started using project management softwares, I've been able to get so much work done. Have you tried anything similar in the past? So I still left them with another question again. So even though it looked like I provided a solution or an answer to that, I still left them with a question so that when they leave me, that question will keep ringing in their mind and they will want to reach out to me and try to get answer to that question, okay? Because this is now a totally new question, okay? So I like using this one. You can try that one also. Um, we'll also have the... For some reason, I can't even see the top of my slide. <laughs> okay, so um, this one has to do with comics, okay, or making jokes. I hardly use this one because not everybody may know your joke, right? It's just like um, before now, I never knew what the word dabbing means. So when people say things and somebody said, oh yeah, dab, and people are dabbing and laughing and feeling fun, I am like, oh no, they probably just insulted me, <laughs> okay? So 
when you're using this one, it's very, very dicey because you have to use it with somebody that is used to that your joke or that knows uh, what that your joke means, okay? It's just like, for example, um, a lot of us know about Egbedu and um, Ewa and Kassava, something like that, something about um, a speech that was made by our one of our presidential aspirants, okay? A lot of people know about it, but not every single person, okay? So if you want to... Uh, make an elevator pitch on comic. Just use, you have to use jokes that you feel the person can easily relate to or they would understand, okay? Here, I have one. Now, the top one is not something everybody can relate to because not everybody knows so much about it, but maybe the second one, yes, okay? So I have one at the top. It says, I am Dorcas. I'm so glad and honored to finally meet you because you're one of my role model and a genius goat. <laughs> now, if someone that doesn't know what the goat means or what I mean by the goat, they're going to get offended and I call them a goat, right? And then, and I'm like, oh, not many people can claim to be a goat, but those who are the greatest of all time. A goat is actually an acronym for greatest of all time, okay? Now, but not everybody knows that. Only a few person probably knows that. So when you use that with somebody that doesn't know it, especially in Africa, my dear, you're looking for trouble. You're not looking for elevator pitch. You're looking to be thrown out of an elevator, okay? So you have to be very careful with this one. But then I have a second one that seems a bit relatable or that people can easily relate with. It says, do you know that the average person can only pay attention for eight seconds? That's not even long enough to place my coffee order in the morning. Maybe that's why my barista always gets it wrong. But seriously, I think that's why so many companies struggle to hit headlines. So I've made the person understand there is a problem here that needs a solution. But then I added a joke to it. What is the joke? That's maybe because of the life, um, the attention spam of human being. That's why even my own barista cannot get my um, lawsuits or whatever, right? Okay. So you have to use something that somebody can relate to if you're using this type of um, elevator pitch. Okay. And then um, we have this one. Uh, first of all, in this one, you have to share a significant testimony of a customer or an achievement in the past. Okay. And then also share your own personal or your company's landmarks, okay? So share a testimony of how you have made a customer or a company very happy, and then also share what you did or what you achieved or what your company have achieved in this kind of um, elevator pitch. I have an example here. It says, we have a customer that transitioned to a fully remoted workforce this year and needed help making sure deadlines were met. With our help, they were able to get up to 10% of their time back in their day and focus on more important things like strategic planning, okay? So there, you've shared a testimony of a customer that you people made happy. You've also shared what you did, the what you were able to help them to achieve, okay? So this one also is very, very catchy. All right. And then another one is the emotional. I don't use this one a lot, maybe because I am not too, I don't know, should I say I'm not emotional? Or maybe because I don't want it to get too dark, where instead of the person looking forward to meeting me, they now feel pity for me. All right. So that's <laughs> that's one reason why I don't really use this one. Okay. Um, there I said, I said, don't make it too dark. Okay. As much as you want it to be emotional, you don't want it to be too dark or too spooky or seeming like, oh, you're suffering so much and this person needs to help you know okay and i also said don't make yourself pitiful okay we're not having a pity party we're having a connect okay and then also show your admiration and love for that situation or tool so instead of putting yourself in a pitiful situation or keeping the situation too spooky or too dark no show your emotion as per love affection passion for that um, solution that you have for that person or for that thing you want the person to give to you. Do you understand? Okay. So I have an example there. It says, it may seem like any other tool, but when you look closely, it really is helping teams connect. And not just that, but it's helping cultivate teams that actually enjoy working together on new projects. That's something that's hard to come by, but something 
everyone is looking for. So I have made, I've kept that person in an emotional situation. I've made the person understand that the tool I'm using, I'm very passionate about it. I enjoy using it, but then also it has solved the problem. So I didn't put myself in a pitiful situation. I didn't keep the situation so spooky and so dark, you know, but I was able to share something that the person would want, is interested in and say, oh, this thing that this young lady has passion for, I want to see how it is or how it works or how much it can achieve, okay? And then, um, oh, sorry. Then we have the last one, end with a one-liner. Now, this one is always very catchy because I don't know, maybe it's all over the world, but I think Nigeria, we like lines. We like, you know, uh, you... Ah, what's the other one? You picture the future, you know? <laughs> all those terms, all those one-line terms or one-liner, something that is very catchy and trending, okay? So you can also use that, all right? Um, I said, first of all, end it with a catchy line, okay? So it's not just a, a, a one-liner, but make that one-liner very catchy, all right? And then make sure you present the solution in that one-liner. So that one-liner you're using or that one line you want to use, make sure the solution is there because that person may not remember all the plenty things you said, right? But they'll remember your name, your organization, and that one line. So if your solution is not in that one line, you still lost the person, all right? And then also make the solution appear like the final way. Okay, so I have an example here. I said um, over one quarter, that's 26% of all deadlines are missed each week because of a lack of clarity. But with the right project management tools, that number could be much lower. So the question is, can your business afford not to use project management software? So I left them with the one line. What's the one line? Project management software. Can your business afford? It's just like you tell somebody, um, um, oh, there are so many one-liners. Now I can't remember them. But anyways, I put the solution in there in that one line. I left them even with the question. <laughs> I left them with the one line that they might not remember everything I said, but they will always remember the words, can my business really survive without project management software? Just that one line. And then they'll be, okay, let me call Docker's up because I need that software. I need to see the magic that software is doing. So these are some examples, all right? So in summary, if you did not get anything I said, or at least get to know what an elevator pitch means and how to be able to achieve it. It means you meeting somebody possibly for the first time, or maybe the only time you get to meet them getting yourself introduced or known to that person and telling them the idea you have to solve or the, I mean, the problem you have to solve, the idea you have to solve that problem, okay? Or um, the opportunity or something you want them to do for you. Maybe you want an internship opportunity, a job opportunity, uh, but being able to sell that your idea, okay? And then last of all, ensuring that you strike a deal or there is a connection that you will use to follow up, okay? So I have a typical example here of um, an elevator page, okay? So this young guy meets this lady for the first time. He has been trying so hard to meet her because he has something to share with her or a solution or whatever. So he finally meets her, okay? And then he just as you can see, the statement there is very short, but there's no way this lady would not want to. In fact, I am looking for this guy. I want to connect with him to know if he finally, if this is solution actually exists so I can leverage into it. What is that? He said, I love getting free food. Who doesn't love free food? <laughs> I love getting free food at work. Who doesn't? Okay. I want to build an app that will let people notify others when they place free food somewhere. Now you see why I want to, even, even me want to connect with this guy because I want to know where free food is, okay? It says people who subscribe to a lot will then know where to find their free food, all right? So he, he went straight to the point. He presented that, oh, there's a problem, but I have a solution to that problem or I have an idea for that problem, right? And um, 
this is who I am, or this is what I am passionate about, okay? And you see the lady paying serious attention. I'm very sure they struck a deal, and they're probably right now trying to create that app for me and you to enjoy someday, if Nigeria will agree. Anyways, thanks for listening. Um, I'll take any questions, but before I take the questions, let me just try to share my one example elevator pitch. Okay, my one example elevator pitch that is always remarkable to me and always um, resounding to me is um, the one with um, the former president, President Olusegun Obasanjo. So I went to Ogun State for a conference under Nigerian Society of Chemical Engineers, right? Um, for some reason, I think he's a chemical he graduated as a chemical engineer from undergraduate days. But anyways, they were able to get um, Green Legacy. Green Legacy is um, where he lives, okay, where Oluwa Sindro lives. Um, it has practically everything in there and a stone threw away from it is Otter Farm, right? So we're using, they were using his hotel for the conference proper and everything. So I was opportune to lodge in the hotel. It's called Green Legacy Hotel Results. All right, so I came down, I, I just like to tour around the hotel when I have break time or when I'm supposed to go for breakfast. I finish my breakfast early enough and I take a tour. I just take a walk, you know, stretch my feet or practice my presentation because I was going to present a paper and all that. So I noticed almost everywhere they had his picture and I'm like, ah, ah, I just look that fun. I didn't know it was owned by him. I just, I, I just look that fun of the past president or is it because he was just now um, the president because I met him that was 2019 or so. Anyway, so I said, ah, oh, is it that it's because he just left seat, you know, so they are trying to patronize him and get him to want to come to this place and all that. I was just curious to know what it is. Okay. So, um, one of those days while I was having that curiosity and even taking pictures because they were very nice, beautiful artifacts, beautiful, awesome art pictures of him. So while I was doing that, all of a sudden, someone that looks exactly like the picture I was snapping with came passing by. And I'm like, could that be him or his brother? The person looked way younger and way handsome, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Okay, no offense or no, no extra explanation, but just saying, okay, so I was like, could that be him or could that be his brother or what? I'm like, so that curiosity got me. I wanted to find out who the person is. So I went to the person, the minute I got there, I said, excuse me, sir, are you the same person on that picture I'm snapping with? He said, I don't know. What do you think? I said, no, because you look way different from the picture and what we see on TV while that person was the president. He now said, what do you mean? I said, okay, um, I would love to explain to you, but you're rushing. Of course, we we're walking and talking. He wasn't going to stand with me and thought he was rushing off to somewhere. Sorry to distract you, doctors. Please round up time for our time. Thank okay, you. Okay, sorry. So I said, okay, now you're rushing off. So, but I promise if you would come back, I would, be, I would love to explain to you what I mean. So he was like, oh, that's serious. I, I would like to know that. So I'm going up the elevator. You can either join me or wait here for me. I'll be back in five minutes and I'll love to have a discussion with you. So you see, I left him with a curiosity. I left him feeling, oh, I have an answer or an explanation for him. And he came back, we connected, we exchanged contacts and also um, tried some other things um, relating to my project there. So, you can have your elevator pitch anytime, um, but you have to have it prepared and ready to take the opportunity when it comes before you. So thank you once again, and I'll welcome some questions now if you have any. Thank you so much, Docas. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Thank you, thank you. Um, I mean, you, you basically just put it out there for us. Like, you broke it down. We don't need to do any kind of research again. We, should, we just need your slides. We'll grab it and we know we're good to go. I mean, you talked about how for elevator pitches, you have five main parts, you know? You have the introduction. You introduce yourself. State your problem. State the solution. Um, your value proposition and the person's call to action. action. That's just bam. Like, everything is just set. That's you already given us the skeleton. So thank you so much. And like you said, in as much as jokes are, you know, they are always welcome. You have to be careful so that the lingo you use is something the person can understand. So it's a kind of mix of like what we talked about, effective communication. You have to ensure that your audience knows what you're talking about. So that, like you said, they will not boot you off the elevator instead of giving you card or inviting you for further talks. 
So thank you so much, Dorcas. Thank you so, so much. Okay, so we have a couple of questions. Um, I'm seeing a, okay, uh, I'm seeing a comment from Daniel Omolewa. Okay. Can the elevator pitch technique work to get a lady's number? Dorcas, it's like we should have specified corporate elevator pitch. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I, maybe I should have specified. Okay. <laughs> well, honestly, you wouldn't want to practice or get an elevator pitch already just because you want to get a lady's number. Yes, elevator pitch is supposed to help you sell yourself and all that, but come on. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, okay. honestly, you can. But that, yeah. that shouldn't be what we're learning about it for, please. <laughs> okay. So, um, Doctor, because of time, we need to go like really fast. Just answer just one question, please. One minute, please. Okay. The question is um, okay, please give an example of the aftermath of a successful elevator um, pitch. You've gotten their card, mail, or direct phone number. What should you do next? Just one minute. One like I said, do them an email, do them a call, or do them a text. You know, let them know that you you still remember that you people are supposed to have a connection, or maybe a reminder. Oh, you said you were going to get back to me, or you are interested in what I have to sell. Um, I'm here to hear from you. I'm still looking forward to it. So yeah, just do them a call, an email, or a text. Okay, thank you so much, Dorcas. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I really enjoyed and I really learned a lot. Thank you. Okay, so um, thank you so much to our speakers. You all were wonderful. And if you have more questions, just drop it in the chat and I'm sure our speakers will be kind enough to respond to your questions and your comments. So now we're going to go on to our membership drive, which will be taken up by our ALP team lead, Iwari Christopher. Iwari, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, please um, go ahead. Or should we um, take our capture no. now? What do you think? No, the membership drive. Okay, maybe we can yes. take the cap. Let's take the picture now. Let's see me and take the picture. Then we go to the membership okay, drive. I'll so just take my drive. two sessions together because of time. Okay, okay, that's fine then. Okay, June, if you can hear yes. me, you can, you can just stop sharing for a while. Okay. While we okay. take our okay. picture. Okay, I've stopped sharing. Okay, I also want everyone to turn on their cameras. Turn on your video so that we can capture. Okay, uh, more videos are still coming. More videos are still coming up. I don't know why everybody's frowning. Please smile small. <laughs> yeah, <baby>. small, <laughs> just small. <laughs> okay, I think we are good. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay, so let's move on to the membership drive. Um, Chukwemeka, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Good evening, June. Okay, good evening. Okay, can you see the slide? Yes, I can see the slides. Please, can okay. you help me take it to the first one? Okay, good to go. Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope we've all learned a lot from the ALP. I personally, I did learn a lot. So I am Chiwike Chukwemeka. I am a field engineer with Microsoft Smart Africa Services. Please, next slide. So this is the membership drive for 
the YP. This is my next, the next slide. Okay, so as SP members, I want to start with here. As we all know, SP is a forum where the young community come together and share their knowledge, experience, and skills. So, as SP members, we have international events like the NAIS, the OLEF. We also have the Students' Technical Symposium and Exhibition, which I believe that all students should be aspiring to attend. As SP members, we benefit from online resources like the Journal of Petroleum Technology, where you can always get technical papers from One Petro. We have regional events and communities in our various SP sections. We have online networking. We have recognitions like the YP of the Month and other awards. And also, SP has scholarships and grants, which as students and both graduate members can gain from. Please, next slide. So, as students members, you are advised to participate actively in your student chapter. For example, you have different groups in the school, like the technical interest group. You can benefit from scholarship Ambassador, ambassador lecture programs like this one, SP Connect, Student Paper Contest, and Petro Bowl. Then you can also have an e mentor. Please, next slide. So, SP also gives back to the society through SP Cares by helping out for the session. One or two every year, we usually have white clean up. Then we also have the orphanage visit. So SP helps out in the community via SP. Please, next slide. So I've been an SP member since 2016. SP has been a constant in my professional life. I can't remember myself as a beginner engineer without referencing SPD. It has helped me mostly in all aspects of the beginner industry. I've had the opportunity of attending two student technical symposiums at the University of Illinois University. It's helped me in working on my presentation skills because for one of the technical conferences, I represented my school, the Energy Challenge. But it has also enabled me to have several mentors. Then SP has offered me different opportunities to learn. I've been able to have over five excursions and field trips from SP. As a student member, I was able to go to visit Slum BJ, Baker Hughes, Weatherford. As a graduate, I've participated this year alone in two field trips. So SP is a really wonderful society, which I'll encourage everyone to participate actively because there is a lot you can gain. Please, next slide. So for more, you can visit sp.org currently. The membership renewal, renewal portal for 2023 is already open. You can start to renew your membership. If you have any challenge, you can reach out to me or any of the hosts on this meeting. For more resources, you can visit PetroWiki and the Energy for Me website. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, like he said, join SPE. The speakers, um, the speakers that talk to you today are avid volunteers, and you can see how much you know they have learned, how much they have grown with SPE. So please, if you are not part of SPE, join up. If you are part and you're not an active volunteer, please become active. Thank you very much. 
Okay, so now we're going on to our, we're going on to a testimonial from our ALP team lead, Iwari Christopher, to take us through what SB has to offer as her personal experience and then help us round up our wonderful events. Iwari, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Once again, thank you for joining this ALP, like our reading ALP for this body. I must say the, the lectures from the both speakers, they are just top notch and the participation. I, I believe that going forward it will increase. Okay, personally, because of time, I'm just going to keep it very short. I would say that SP has impacted me in three major areas, which is learn, learning and networking, leadership and their mentorship. So uh, I joined SP as a student member in my year one, the first year in school, that's when I joined SP. And SP was uh, the platform that helped me to become a leader first in the university. So I basically became um, a, a, um, an executive, a chapter executive in my year two as a welfare officer. So that exposed me to leadership and, you know, it showed me how to take up challenging roles, how to do this and that. And also that exposed me to other leadership opportunities in school. So from my from my experience and work in SP, I was also pushed, pushed and then given um, a position in the faculty without standing for an election. So SP puts you out there, it helps you to do things that you don't even know as a person that you can do or you can achieve. And then exposes you to leadership. And I must say that from then, the sky has been my limit. I've been taking up other roles and it keeps getting better and better. How about learning and networking? SP has given me the opportunity to be bold. I know my first ever speech, though I know when I was in secondary school, I used to do some form of you know, news reading and all that, but being able to stand and do presentations, I give it to SP. I can remember when uh, Dr. Ike was sharing his slide on the um, Train the Trainer workshop, and then he showed where I joined them for ALP in 2017 at uh, uh, UNIO. That was my first, and I was really, really nervous. But after the opportunity, standing in front of crowd, I know sharing my experience as a young member of SP, I can tell you that I've never remained the same after that. And also networking. So where I work currently, when we started our graduate training program, because of the opportunities that SP has afforded me, I saw one of the engineers, one of the CEOs of one of our investing companies. And I was told that he's a member of SP. Immediately I went to LinkedIn and saw all his profile. saw how he has been a, chap, um, um, a section uh, chairman. He has been Nigerian council chairman, he's a member of BOT. When I walked up to him using Docker's lecture, you know, to start a conversation with him, the first thing I used was SP. And immediately I said, oh, sir, you know, you were SP so many times, you were the person that initiated this, initiated that. The conversation became interesting because we had something to talk about. We had, you know, a common ground. So these are some of the opportunities that SP gives to you. You're able to talk to people that you normally you can't talk to because of what SP, your exposure and mentorship to wrap up. You know, I've had most of my, the only mentor that is not an SP member that I have is just one. Every other person that, has mentored me, has added to me, are all SP members. And these people, what, what I what I noticed in SP is that you don't really need to beg them. I can say that three of my mentors I have in SP right now, I did not go to them to formally say, oh, can you be my mentor? It just started because of the opportunity that SP has given to you. You go to events, you're able to talk to people, you see people looking out for you. You can easily talk to this person, call this person on phone, I have this challenge. A senior member that on the normal day you can't talk to. So these are many more the opportunities that SP has afforded me. And I want to wrap up by saying that you see these lectures and learnings that we're having, especially today. I was listening to Ofre and um, Dockers, and I can tell you that I've learned a lot. Even me that I've been doing presentations and elevation speeches, I can tell you that right now I'm going to use Docker's template and I'm going to write out my own for different scenarios so that in case I get the opportunity, I just hit the nail on the head. So these are the opportunities that SP gives to you. And I want to encourage you, even as you are gaining a lot from SP, you don't want to gain this alone. You want other of your colleagues, your friends, your family members to also draw from this well of knowledge. So I encourage you to, you know, encourage everyone around you, engineers, you know, your classmates, let them come and join and draw these benefits. We're also drawing. Thank you very much for joining. Our next ALP is coming up on the 24th. 
And I, I tell you that this board here is going to be value upon value, value upon value. We're going to teach you things that, you know, and I like the fact that for this ALP is most of the topics were picked by students, the student president, the chapter president. We basically ask them to tell us what would you want to learn? What do you want us to teach you? And they've come up with wonderful topics, wonderful topics. And I like the energy in the room today. You could see that because these topics were brought by them. They can easily relate. They have lots of questions to ask, you know. So thank you very much for joining. And we hope to see you on the 24th. Please, next ALP, I want to see 100 and above participants on the call. Today, we were close to 40. So by now, we can do better. We can do double and even more. So thank you very much once again. And I also want to use this opportunity to appreciate all of my committee members who have been working there and to make sure all this is so successful. And also for YPs, when we call on them, they always answer us. Thank you very much. And also um, the chapter presidents, thank you for also being good team players, for working with us, you know, taking this information out, giving us topics when we ask, volunteering to take opening prayer, one speech or the other when we call upon you. Thank you very much. And I would say have a good evening. I'll see you again on the 24th. Thank you. Thank you so much, Iwari. Thank you so much. And like she said, we have DLP coming up on Thursday. We have our YP Hangout on Saturday. So please, please come through. And I'm sure we're going to learn a lot and we're going to have fun. Okay, so for our closing prayer, um, Emmanuel, can you hear me? Can you say closing prayer? Okay, so I guess I'll just... Uh, Chukuka, can you come to the rescue again? Help us close. Sorry, they can't mute before, but now you can unmute now. Okay, um, Emmanuel, can you can you hear yes, me? Can, can you speak? Okay, yes, please good close in prayer. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay. Okay. Um. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Last and Father, we thank you for today. It's not by our minds, not by our powers, by your grace. May your grace be sufficient in our life, in Jesus' name. We thank you for a successful ALP. We hope to do more with your grace, in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the grace to um, come again together to do more ALPs and more technical events. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to everyone. Thank you to the ALP committee. Thank you to our speakers. We really appreciate your time. We really appreciate your efforts. Those that started and then ended with us, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. And as we've all been saying, try to communicate effectively. Volunteer, 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 and do have a wonderful rest of the day. Good night, everyone.